Hi, my name is Megan, and this is a Naughty Mess Knitting Podcast. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to my knitting diary, knitting vlog, whatever people call it. Um, if you're new here, hi, welcome. Uh, we cover all the regular content of what I'm making, finished objects, acquisitions, um, and then other yarny things. I also talk about books that I'm reading. And if you are returning, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. We have some fun things to talk about this week because I did go to Rose City Yarn Crawl on Friday. Um, today is, I don't actually know what day, the 9th, Saturday, March 9th. Um, hopefully I'll get this up later tonight, if not tomorrow, um, for you guys to hear all about Portland yarn, <laughs> the Portland yarn scene. Um, it was super fun though. So yeah, I will talk about that when I talk about acquisitions, probably like in tandem. Um, let's get through other things first. Uh, first I'll do what I'm wearing since you haven't seen this in a while. Um, but if you spied me <laughs> on um, the Naughty Lamb Instagram stories yesterday because I was wearing this, which is just one of the sweaters I took with me, um, because it's in EKF yarn. We were going there to get some EKF yarn, you know, get to wear it to support. And also we were on the Naughty Lamb um, stories because we were first in line. <laughs> That's a whole thing. We'll talk about it. Hold on. Um, okay. So what I'm wearing is my superlative sweater by Samantha Guerin, who is Samantha Guerin Design. Oh, this is actually great because that's also going to be my finished object as a pattern by her. I didn't even think about that. Um, let's pretend like I thought about that and I planned all of this very well. So this is a top-down drop shoulder sweater pullover that is intended to be knit with boucle that's like that's what the pattern um is written for and also I think that would be like one of the only ways you could achieve gauge because row gauge is kind of hilarious with boucle just the way that the yarn catches um this is a size six which is a 52 inch bust the recommended ease is seven if seven is four to eight inches positive um and I'm you know right towards the top end of that with this uh I use the 3.75 millimeter needles. I cannot remember if that's recommended, but that's what I have listed in Ravelry. Um, and 3.25 millimeter for the ribbing, which is in a different yarn. Um, I can get a little bit closer. This is Explorer Knits and Fibers, um, Boucle DK in the color To the Stars Who Listen, which is a color she's brought, brought back many times, but I think originally it was like a, like a, an extra color from a different dye or like a featured dye or to a different collection that was done by um Red Door Fiber Studio and their um Serge Mass Akatar. I think it's just Akatar collection. Okay. Um and she's brought it back a ton of times. I think I got this boucle from the summer market. I think I actually don't know. <laughs> last year but I got it last year and made this last year um this yarn is 100% superwash merino it is um 240 yards for 100 grams and uh the uh cuffs and uh collar and hem are all in to the stars who listen also but in cashmere DK which is 80 I think cashmere caverns DK or whatever but it is 80% superwash merino 10% nylon 10% cashmere um it's 231 yards for 100 grams um you know it's so interesting because the boucle has more yardage for 100 grams it knits up so differently so I mean obviously like you can kind of see some of the knit lines here but um like wearing it it's such an interesting experience, right? Because this is not what any other superwash merino would feel like on your skin. And it's definitely, I don't, I don't know if it's like, I couldn't even tell you if it's softer. I don't feel like it's softer to me personally because of all the like, you know, the little 
dudes, bloops, you know, I'm going to call them bloops, little, little, um, loopies that are on here, but it is like very cozy. Like it just makes the most cozy type of garment. Like partly because like there is no stitch definition inside, just like the way that it is. And it just, yeah, it feels nice. Anyway, um, that's my thought on it. I really like this pattern. This was a pattern, um, that came out in the fall for DK or for boucle DK kind of knits, like, cause that was really popular last year. Um, in the rest of my knitting group though, I think there was mixed opinions on this pattern. There are no short rows, which are harder to do with boucle, but definitely possible with certain types of short rows like Japanese short rows. Um, which if you don't know what that is, you do a short row, just like a German short row, except for instead of pulling your yarn over, you, it's kind of like a wrap and turn. You leave it, you just turn, but you use a, like a light bulb stitch marker on where your turn is and you pull it over when you get to it. You pull the yarn over the stitch from the row below. So it does like, it does look more like a German short row when it's knit, but it would be hard to maybe see German short rows. I don't know, maybe with the boucle, but you could certainly do the Japanese and like, you know, you can't miss them because there are light bulb stitch markers right on there. Anyway, I don't know. But that um, does make, I think it makes a difference in drop shoulder knits. Like I do think that it's helpful, especially if you have a slightly broader shoulders to pull your neckline up a little bit with that and help, you know, so then you don't get a weird strangly thing, but also then the drop shoulders do actually sit like where they're supposed to be on the arm for all the sizes, or, you know, if you have broader shoulders, but are a smaller size. Um, and the sleeves were interesting. I thought they were written a little bit strangely, like just the, because they're kind of straight and then they decrease kind of rapidly. And I just, it, it, I don't know, it could have been done differently. Um, they fit me fine, but this is a rather larger size. Like this gives me seven, what's math? 50, sorry, what did I say? 52 inch. So this gives me five ish inches, maybe a little bit more than that of ease and it it does drop like you can see the drop line you know like it does have a drop on me I don't know I liked the pattern it works for my body um but yeah I don't think we had mixed opinions in the knitting group so I don't know take that take that as you will um I do think it was a very simple pattern like there was not a lot going on with the shaping and other things okay that's what I'm wearing um what else do I have to say about this? I, I will put a picture or have already put a picture of what I look like in this standing. So I don't have to stand up and move my chair and all the things because this is old news. Um, I do really like wearing this though. It's super cozy. So for me personally, this is like a, a, a winner of a knit. I wear it a lot. Um, yeah, that is all. Okay let's move on to finished objects. My finished object of the week, I only have one, is a test knit for Samantha Guerin. So um, this is called the Small Fry Scarf, again, by Samantha Guerin from Samantha Guerin Design on Instagram. Um, it is a very simple slip stitch pattern, uh, increased only on one side little kind of mini triangular scarf shawl thing. It was intended to be like 60 inches by nine at the widest point. I'm like just under nine blocking, you know, and because of slip stitches, they make sort of a, a ridged texture. If you have slip stitches on both sides and columns like this. Um, and so you do, I mean, I did like block and, and pull a little bit. It ended up blocking out to be a little bit longer too. And I didn't like aggressively stretch out any of this side here just because I don't have that many blocking pins. I didn't feel like using all the like the little shawl pins because they're annoying. <laughs> so semi laziness. Um, but I thought it, it like looked really nice on the blocking mat, like without having to, you know, stretch out any of this. So I could have, if I had made it a little flatter, I could have maybe lost a little bit, but I think I'm like 62 inches. So it's pretty close. This design is supposed to be with sport weight yarn, but her sport weight yarn was basically, it was like 390 yards for 100 grams. This is 400 yards for 100 grams. That's pretty dang close, um, but labeled as a fingering weight. So there, this is the, the, the fingering sport weight dilemma, right? Um, this is, I think, a Woolberry berry sock 
that I had. Um, it's a two ply. It's probably 80% merino and 20% nylon. Um, I don't know what the color is. I got it from a D-Sash. Um, but it's very pretty. It's very cute. It's very yellow. <laughs> um, I don't like this color, but I do really like the pattern. I will now put it on for you. This is the way that like Samantha has her picture styled that is like intended to be like a wrap close to you. You can do like a tie or a, or a double tie situation here. I do not want to keep this one because I do not like this color. And I knew that going into this. Um, but I do think I might make another one. It was a really quick knit. It was a really kind of like a nice semi mindless knit too. So if I feel, um, like at some point that, and I don't want to do it right now because we are falling into spring and I don't really think it's not just, it's just not cold enough here for me to do this, but I do have only a couple of cows that I like to wear when I walk the dog. And I think this would be a nice alternative to like either make it looser or tighter. Um, and while we're walking, I can like easily unstring it without like sometimes my cows, I'm like stuck, I'm stuck with it on. Um, yeah. And it looks the same. This is one side there is a wrong side and a right side in the pattern just because of, you know, knowing what, what way you're going and always, you know, the increases are only on one side kind of thing. But like there's, there's not in reality, they are identical looking. Um, and the increases and decreases also look very good on both sides because there is I cord edging. So I cord edging. This camera is like really trying to, okay, there we go. You can, oh, it looks so nice. Those lines are like nice and crispy. Here's the other side I cord edging and the slip stitches. Yeah, it looks great. I, yeah, I enjoyed it. It went really fast for me. Um, it, it wears cute. I just like, I don't like this color and that is fine. Um, this look at my little gift knit pile. Uh, so that is what I finished this week. I finished, I blocked it all before we left for Rose City. So I was just done. I need to just put in my notes for the test net, which is not due until like March 20 something. So like I'm way ahead of schedule, which is great. Um, I just was feeling a little bit project overwhelmed. So I needed to just knock that out and not make it progress slowly. Um, I was doing it on my, it was my desk knit for most of this week and well, for the first couple of days of this week and then I was done. Okay. Let's go through my whips. Um, again, I feel a little overwhelmed with the whip number because I had it down to like four or five for a while. Oh, sorry. You know, sometimes I think about like being really organized and making sure I always do things in the same order, but like, I don't talk that way. <laughs> I get distracted. Um, okay. Let me just give you the one other detail about this that I did not, and that is that it's on 3.25 millimeter needles. I think that's the suggested size. I did a semi swatch. I did like really the first, you know, few inches. That was probably the best way to swatch. Um, and yeah, it, I'm, I'm good. My gauge is still good. Even after blocking, it is like my row gauge aspirational. Row gauge is aspirational. I'm a little bit loose on row gauge, which is not uncommon for me. Um, but I'm again, pretty, pretty spot on for the, the other, for the stitches gauge. Okay. Let's start at oldest. Um, calm down cardigan one day. This will not be on the whip list anymore. One day. I'm really hoping it's next week. We'll see. <laughs> I just made a crazy face. Um, we'll see how it goes. So uh, this is the Calm Down Cardigan, which is a pattern by Lily Kate France, who is Lily Kate Makes on Instagram and YouTube. And it is a saddle shoulder cardigan, picture here, whatever. Um, it has an applied button band. This is my first style of this style cardigan, not only a saddle shoulder construction cardigan, but also an applied button band. Um, I am using, I am making a size four, which is 51 and a half inches. The recommended ease is 10 to 12 inches. So more oversized than I am making it. Um, I am using four millimeter needles for the body, which is done, but also for the sleeves. Um, 
3.75 for the ribbing and 3.5 for the button band button band is not done and I did use those sizes and it does look good like I didn't get any weird scrunching or anything like that um and I am using a merino cone from Wooly Knit in the color bias which is 257 yards for 100 grams when held double I have two separate cones because I needed over one cone weight of yarn for this that's the information um, and if you do the math on that, like, so it is a 500 gram cone. That would be five skeins of DK, right? Like if that's, that's how the math works on that, um, uh, of the 257. I need like six and a half for this size, I think. So I had to get two, but I'm going to have quite a lot left over. Um, one thing to note is I did weigh my, um, stick season, that I made for Mike. I don't know if I put all the numbers in Ravelry yet. I need to like finish up cl cleaning up all of the numbers and the charting for uh, this quarter for so far this year. Um, but the with the additional yarn I got from somebody else, I am still only at like 510 grams. So I, that cone was not 500 grams. I would have still needed some. So that doesn't really like my math didn't math with how long his arms were and you know, whatever. But um, I did not have a 500 gram cone, like just under, not a lot under, but um, you know, 10 grams under or whatever. Okay, just letting you know. Here is my calm down cardigan though. I did a lot of knitting in the car. Katie drove us to Rose City and and uh, I drove us back, but, um, going there, we had a lot of light and I got a lot of knitting done and I got a whole sleeve done this week. I know, right? It's super fantastic. I love it. It's a little bit long. Um, it will be a tiny bit longer. It is intended to be an oversized sleeve because we already know my rogue, rogue gauge is not exactly accurate. Um, I, by the time I got through the decreases, which I was just mindlessly doing in the car and could not actually try on well, I was like, you know, just at where the four inches was. And I think I had one more decrease to do when I stopped in the car. And I was like, you know what? I am just going to finish it. But then I also decided I did the whole, this cuff is like four inches long. I did the whole four inches for the cuff, but I did do more rapid decreases. That's the only thing I've changed in this pattern so far. Um, and I just, let me put my hand in here and I'll tell you why I did this. Um, as you can see, this is a cuff. This is actually to me like the perfect cuff. It is not very snug on my wrist, but it is also not floppy. Now, and this, if you look at the pictures for this pattern, this is intended to be an oversized cuff. Like it is intended to be a little bit floppy. I don't really, I didn't want it to be as floppy as it was. So I did like four, four extra decreases of two. So eight whole stitches less. And I'm so glad because the very edge of the cuff is like pretty much, you know, how I like it. Still a little bit baggier than the one I'm wearing today, but pretty close. If I had just done less decreases, it would have been too floppy for me. It would have annoyed me. And I'm like, I made so <laughs> This sweater is feeling like a little bit of a slog. I'm going to make this one adjustment to make it like exactly how I want. I'm going to make sure I put those notes in um, Ravelry for me in just in case I lose my mind to make another one of these in the future. <laughs> I will know that. What I will say is if I had, if I really did it again, like I'm obviously not going to do this because that's crazy, but I would have done a more rapid decrease. Like I know that the oversized sleeve was the intention. I don't, I want a, a tighter cuff. So like I would have done, or maybe even by here, just done four rows between sort of five the whole way and made, you know, several more decreases to, but to get to the same number, number of rows. I'm going to just replicate this next week. I did not pick up the other armhole. So I'm still one giant armhole. When you do pick up the stitches, cause you're not picking up every single row, like that is a big sleeve, but it does not quite as enormous as the whole looks. Uh, actually maybe it is. It is really large. Um, you do continue the detail all the way down though. And that looks super nice. And, um, it does look a little different than the top band just because you're doing this part flat. And then the, this one is in the round and 
because I combination rib, my combination rib in the round always looks nicer than flat. Um, and flat, I did regular ribbing. So this is also just a little more open. The one thing I think I would also change if I did this again is I would be a little more particular and probably play with it a little bit more on the pickups. I actually think they look kind of even. This sits pretty high though. And I would maybe pick up the like the other way than it says to hide them, like to make this more level. Similarly to how I did, which we'll see in a second, for the Skyline tee, which it doesn't like the saddle doesn't sit up on that one. This is the intention though. I think like this is what the picture looks like. It has like a, an actual ridged edge. Um, I just like, I don't dislike it. I just think I like the other better. So um, that's what I have for you. And I will definitely be picking up the other sleeve and knitting as much as I can this week of, of that to be done. I will also try my best to pick out buttons like in the next day or so because I think I just need to get them on. If I finish the sleeve completely and block this and don't have buttons already chosen, I will not get them on for a long time. This is my, in my fear. <laughs> So I want to just have them ready so I can just like block and put them on. I'm excited to block it though. I don't think it'll grow a ton. Um, I did try it on with a sleeve, which definitely changes the fit because the big gapey armhole, you know, makes it seem floppier than it is. And it is definitely not a lot of ease on me for sure. Um, and I am okay with that. I, I think it looks great. Um, and I think with the decreases at the bottom, because my hips are wide and this did there's decreased stitches. So they, you only have three buttons and then underneath that goes like this. I do think it's not going to have like as much of a drapey overlap on me. And that is going to be very cute though. It'll be cute. Um, okay. That's whip number one. Whip number two is the instant crush pullover. This is the knit along I'm doing with some of you lovely watchers, listeners, whatever. I mean, I hope that you're knitting while, while you're <laughs> watching me and not just like watching my crazy face the whole time. That would not be as fun for you probably. Okay. Um, the instant crush is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli, who is Hohi Locat on Instagram. I am making, um, oh, it is a top down raglan all over color work sweater intended to be made out of fluff though you could use whatever yarn you want obviously it's like a dk weight but she makes her sample her like sample that is what's always listed here is or listed is shown here is um two strands of mohair i'm doing two strands of surrey which gives you a slightly denser fabric i am making a size six which is a 47 and a quarter inch bust um the recommended ease is zero, so that's close to zero for me, the closest one to zero. Um, I am using four millimeter needles for the body, three millimeter needles for the ribbing, and that is the intended or the suggested needle sizes. And then I am making this out of Surrey Lace from Backloop Yarn Co. in four colors, which I will tell you the names of them as I hold it up. But it is 74% baby Surrey alpaca, 26% silk, 328 yards for 50 grams. And I, um, I love it. Okay. Here are the colors just so we do this whole, see, I'm trying to be a little bit organized here. We'll do this whole doodad and then we will. Okay. So this is made out of, or this is, um, we'll call this the main color because this is what I started my neckline with. It is the only one I have three skeins of and will, should be my, all of my edgings too, right? So the main color is called, uh, frost. And then this dark blue is called Nordic. The yellow is called Goldenrod. And the white blue speckles is called Tia Beanie. And I love it. Okay, hold on. I'll flip it inside out or right side out. I do knit color work inside out. So it is always inside out for me while I'm working on it, which is also kind of fun when I flip it right side out because I'm like, oh, look at that. It's so pretty. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Um, I peek it. You know, you can peek from the inside. You can see it. Uh, I have... What I did make a decision. I said I needed to just make the decision I did. I did last week. I decided to pick up a sleeve. Um, so I cut all the body. So all the things connected are from the, from the sleeve. I did not do a ton of the sleeve. I did like 25 rows or something. I'm just, uh, shy of where my body, you know, I'm not to where the body is, but I, the sleeves are going quickly. I, yeah, I just decided I needed a break. 
after I did this little, um, I don't even know what this shape is called, circular thing. Um, yeah, I decided I just, the body is a lot of stitches. It's not like, it's not overwhelming. It's not worse than other things, but doing all over color work, like I decided I wanted to like get through a chart faster. And so I'm going to finish both sleeves. Um, the body's at a good, a good place that I can like pull it, put it on, make sure the sleeves are exactly where I want them to be, finish them completely, and then move back to the body. Um, I'm hoping to like just to do a ton of sleeve knitting this week actually. You'll see one other project on sleeves and just like rip through several sleeves, several parts of sleeves, get sleeves to a good place. That is where I am. Um, I did finish some more of the body. So like last episode I was here and I did do, you know, I wanted to finish. Basically I just started this yellow motif and I wanted to finish that whole thing. So um, I did finish that, then I picked up the sleeve. Sleeve was at zero, which the armpit you can see right here. Um, it was like the middle of this arrow thing. That was my progress. There you go. Now, let's move on to the last sweater, sweater on my needles. Um, which is the clay sweater by Haley Smedley, who is Ozetta on Instagram. Um, it is a top down drop shoulder garter stripes <laughs> pattern. Um, it's, I'm making the size large, which is 51 and a half inches. It is the size I would make for myself, but this is for my sister-in-law who is smaller than me, but wants really oversized fit. Um, and the intended ease is 10 to 11 inches. So like I would make this size for myself, which is only four and a half inches. That is very close to like how this fits me. That is what I feel like is super comfortable um, or less ease depending on the make. Like I don't tend to pick over that. Like I wouldn't make something 57 inches. I feel like I would be swimming in it too much. It's just not what I like. Um, but she wants to swim in it. And I said, let's do it. <laughs> Whatever you want. Um, I am using five millimeter needles for the body. I did do the neckline, which I think is five, maybe it's a four millimeter needle. I didn't write it down, but um, I did do, I did the collar. So I did some ribbing and then um, I'm using Backloop Yarn Co. Flamingo, the color is Flamingo in uh, Basic DK, which is 100% Super Rush Merino and is 231 yards for 100 grams. And let's look at this bright neon goodness. Um, I did not take this one with me to work on this weekend. We didn't actually get a ton of knitting time, like car knitting time only. Um, but I just wanted to get through a couple parts of it this weekend or this week. So I picked up this is the front. Here's the, whoo wee. It is still so bright. It is so, so bright. Um, I uh, picked up and knit the, oh, here. Nope. That's for the body. Um, I was going to say here's, it says five millimeters, but no, that's not, um, that's not what I use for the neckline. Um, okay. So I, did the neckline first because I think I talked about this last week. I want I finished. Here's where I was last week. No, I don't think I moved it, guys. I don't think this is right. I think I was like at this stripe here. I didn't ha I hadn't done like a ton of progress last week, but I did finish the ball of yarn that I had attached, which was not a lot. Like I I did several rows, you know, maybe six or seven rows. So like maybe just this part here. Um and then I, with my new ball of yarn, picked up and knit the neckline, which this neckline is intended to be sort of like a high crew neck-ish. Um, if you look at the picture that I posted, if you go back, you don't have to, um, but the picture from Rosetta, if you look on Ravelry, is that it is rather high. Like it will block out, I will block it to be, you know, a more relaxed rib. Um, and, oh, that's the, that's the back though. Okay. Let's flip to the front. Um, yeah, so high, highish neck and then, uh, the drop shoulder and the drop is like pretty much where this one is. Um, and then I picked up the arms and they do look small, but only cause I'm on like pretty small circulars. Um, and then, yeah, I picked up the arm. I did not do very much. I did like 12 rows. Uh, but I am 
enjoying uh, again another smaller circumference <laughs> this pattern is not like arduous it is a little bit like when you get to the larger of the this is so neon it's like hard to see the pattern when you get to the larger of the the guard or the yeah the garter um row or stripe you do have to do a lot of purling like knit purl knit purl every row just to make that pattern um yeah but the the back detailing like looks really cute let's see what it looks like now that we can see a sleeve picked up too you can see like it has like the slope just until the sleeve yeah it looks good um I did and this is part of the pattern is like you do some, you do short row shaping. I was like, gosh, did I do? Yeah, you do some short row shaping. So you, you make like a mini cap. It's not a lot of rows, but because of that, um, you have like designated thirds or whatever of where you're going to put your um, stitches, like how many you're going to pick up and you have like a certain number to pick up for each of those. It's not really exactly thirds, but for each of those sections. Um, and she says, just put markers so that they are in the same places for each one. So that like, you know, you, you pick up the front and the back the same, which is what I did. So I've got two little stitch markers over here so I can do the exact same places. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying this knit. I think, uh, it's, it's been going, it went really fast in the beginning. Um, it's just, you know, I really want to get the calm down cardigan done. So I have not been like rushing to get this done. Uh, also, as soon as this gift knit is done, this is my designated gift knit needle source project slot. So as soon as this one's done, I'd like to cast on for my other sister-in-law. Her yarn is not here yet though. So I guess like I don't feel as panicked. <laughs> it's not panic. I mean, I don't have a deadline to get this to them. This is their Christmas present for, um, 2023 and four ish. No, I'll get them something for 2024. But, uh, you know, we picked out the designs together. They know that this is a big make and they are not expecting it anytime soon. So then I have, um, oh, I have, I'm going to still do in, what's in my list for start date project order. So, um, I have the flower vortex blanket to talk about next. And I, this will take, be really short because I don't have tons to share. Flower Vortex uh, by Sunita Brenson, um, who is Bright Bag on Instagram. Um, it is a crochet flower baby blanket. That's what the intention is. Um, the, the blanket itself has like no dimensions. It's just like make until as big as you want because you add them sort of off kilter from each other. You can make them you know, into semi straight columns, or you could make it like kind of, you know, circular, you could do whatever you want with the shape of it. I'm intending to make it crib size, which for in my mind is somewhere between a little bit bigger than crib size, but it'll be like 36 ish inches by like 45, maybe a little bit wider, depending on what happens with these, these flowers. Um, and she makes it like the crochet hook size and the yarn is sport weight. And like the hook size is small. I don't know something small. Um, I am using a four millimeter hook, I think. I think I should actually really <laughs> look when I have Monday open on my phone. Anyway, um, to correct this if I need to, but I'm just using various worsted weight acrylic yarns. So I just upped my needle size or my hook size. Okay. Um, I didn't bring it down. I should have. I forgot. Um, but you'll, you know, last week I showed you a flower. It looked similar to this, but I actually was paying more attention when I started making this flower and what I had, I didn't like that in these places where these, um, you're picking up in the back post, which is why it has sort of like dimension. Right. And I did not like how that was looking because I felt like I could see a lot of the back loop color in this part of the, like, so this light purple, I felt like I could see a ton of the light purple underneath in the dark purple of that other one, the first one I showed you. And I was doing it right mostly, but I was paying a little more attention and I was like, because hmm, I was doing this while we were watching TV and I was like, let me figure out if I could have less show. And what I realized, because these are double crochets, um, and for all of my just knitters, sorry, but here's something you're going to learn about crochet. <laughs> because double crochets have sort of two parts of the stitch, your first 
yarn over, pull through, and then your second through the two loops. There are like two places you could do your through the back post. You could do it lower, which is where the first one is, which is why you can see so much more of the yarn because really that stitch is essentially sitting. I'll show you here, like way down here. That's where I was picking up through the back loop. And this one I did right underneath, like through the second part of the stitch, right at the top. And that is the right intention. That is actually what was intended in the pattern. Cause I like looked closer to see how the flower was folding over. Her, all of her pictures are using one single color changing yarn. So it is harder to see because you don't notice any of it. Cause it's like all the whole flower looks like bluish with like, it sort of changes a little bit during it. But, um, so this actually looks nicer. What also happened because I did that is, oh, and, and, <laughs> on the first one, I missed one double crochet and I just read the pattern wrong. I, it was completely me and it was how she wrote her repeat. I just found it a little bit confusing because the, the just like she broke up this part here instead of, anyway, it was a little bit confusing. The repeat is written correctly. I just not read it correctly. So I had one less crochet or double crochet in the middle. So it's supposed to be six groups of three and that, you know, you crochet your petal into the chain over, you know, the chain stitch that's in between two of the stitches. Um, but they're still supposed to be three together. I did not have the third one. So this basically it just made it more scrunch looking. So it was really not laying that flat. This is laying so much flatter. It also makes it about an inch bigger all around. And I was like, oh, that changes how many flowers I'm going to actually have to do. So I'm actually going to throw out the first two, which is fine. I'm not like sad about it. Whatever. This is not yarn I'm going to cry over, but I'll just remake those colors because I kind of like them. So this is one. Um, I have two others that are up to this point and I had just not decided if I want to join the last color and make several of these. It is a join as you go pattern, but because of the way you join as you go, you could have several just made. And then when you feel like you're ready to start joining colors, you can sort of lay them out and you just put one in the middle and you can join, you know, a couple at a time. I think I might do that because then I don't have to like think very much about what colors I'm choosing at the moment. Um, and so I might make like 20 and then that are completely done and then use the couple that I'm not done with to, to join. I'm going to have to make like, like six across ish. It's not going to sit exactly in a, in a square. So I'm also going to have to figure out, um, but I'll lay a couple of them next to each other, but six by seven of them. So 42 ish. Um, again, maybe more, maybe less depending on how that works out. But here it is. Uh, it looks a lot nicer. So there we go. Sorry. I said I wasn't going to talk very much about that, but I did, I did discover that I was doing something wrong. My second crochet blanket, which has been moving along a lot faster, although I do need to get these flowers done. I think that discovery both was good, um, but also bummed me out a little bit this week. So I was like, I'm gonna not obviously bring any of this to Portland because that's crazy. There's so much um, yarn going on there, but yeah. So this is uh, called the Baby Sea Turtle Blanket. Baby, sorry, this is actually called the Baby Sea Turtle Baby Blanket because there is also like a throw blanket. So like Baby Sea Turtle throw blanket, you know, all basically the same names. Um, by Mandy Huseth, who is made by Mandy86 on Instagram. It is a crib size baby blanket. Um, this one will be 36-ish by 36, maybe a little bit longer. I don't think it's going to be, it's going to be closer to a square. Um, it is, I'm using a six millimeter hook and also various acrylic worsted weight yarn. I can tell you for like this one, a couple of them, cause I know what they are. So like, this is a Karen softy. What, what is it called? Yeah. Karen, uh, or no, sorry, sorry. Bernat softy baby yarn, which is like a really shinier. I, I just like made a baby blanket with this and then I had some left over. Um, like this brighter blue, I believe is maybe a big twist, which is like Joanne's 
Lion brand equivalent of acrylic. Um, and this bright blue. Oh no, sorry, rewind. That's what I think maybe this bright blue is, but the dark blue is actually a hobby. Um, I think the acrylic is Amigo. Um, and I got this one actually also for an undersea themed baby blanket a couple of years ago. We made for a friend. Okay. All that doesn't really matter. It's just acrylic. It could be any colors you want. Um, this is like you start it from the ocean waves side. Let me take the hook out because I'm in the middle of a row. Um, you start from the ocean wave side and then you are adding colors and to the bottom here I am now starting on my brighter blue. It'll go this bright blue and then I have one lighter um, and then some white like the foam of the wave and then you get some sand and then a couple sea turtles which I think I said there were two but there were like five in the picture. I assume I can do as many as I want. Um, I might do four because there are four family members for this uh, the people that we are making I, the per people. The baby I'm making this for is got, he'll have a little brother or a bigger brother and um a mom and a dad they've got a lot of animals though so it could really represent all of their animals you know <laughs> there's a starfish who knows I'm gonna try not to make it like very cluttered for the sea turtles to be in there but um if this ends up like if they end up looking really small and this for some reason ends up looking like wide then I may add some extra I also have plenty of green acrylic for this uh so here is a baby blanket I'm enjoying it it's like it is very much like a chevron, regular chevron pattern, but like you just get to do the waves in like, and she has it listed. If this is a free baby blanket pattern that is like on her blog. Um, and she has like a list of like, do eight, you know, eight of this, then one, then three, then two then or whatever it is. And it mindless makes it mindless. Um, there is a right side and a wrong side though, because also I'm going to, you know, build the turtles on one side but on the right side you do uh oh through the back loop or the front because there are some one stitch things and so I have just been doing it through the front on those so on every change color row you kind of get a pop which would more mimic like a wave rolling in ripply thing I think that's cute so that's where I am am I added quite a lot I didn't put a progress keeper in did I I didn't on this one. Um, it's just been down in my office all week and I, uh, but I did not have a lot done. Like, I don't even think I was in the second color when I showed you this last week, like a little bit. So I did good work. Um, I, I mentioned that I maybe will try to get this done for when this friend comes to visit me. Um, she is coming at the end of this month. And I don't know if I'll have it done by then, but it would be nice for it to not linger because I have even one more baby blanket to to, to make um, this quarter or in, in like April, May. Baby's due in May. Um, so, you know, around the time baby comes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Last project. See, I told you there's a lot of projects this week. Um, and this one, I don't think I even had started. I think I showed you the yarn last week. This is a test knit. This is called the Skyline T by Tori Yu, who is Tori Knits NYC. Um, if you remember, I did the tour, the Tori, the Skyline pullover, which is the DK weight version of this long sleeve in September, September ish. Um, maybe I finished early October. I did take pictures. I remember I took pictures of the finished object for release, um, our knit week in a way, which was early October. So I am making a size five, which is a 50 inch bust. Um, the intended ease of this is four to six positive inches. That's three for me. This is the closest. It's like always you're you're the awkward size. I'm I'm the awkward size. You were the if you have a 47 inch bust or thereabouts, it's the awkward size that like often it goes like, you know, something to 46 and then 48 to whatever. Like I don't know why it always gets left out. It's the left out size. Um, some of these odd numbers are just yeah, just left out. But um, so it's like I could reasonably do a size six which is 54 inches which is seven inches so it's like I'm either going to be just under or just over the uh recommended ease I 
again, you've heard me say this just in this episode and lots of times before, I'm always going to pick probably a little bit less ease. Um, this is, uh, the, the fingering weight version of the, um, Skyline DK pullover, right? And the ease is kind of similar. I think that, um, let me pull over, let me pull up what the Skyline pullover recommended ease is. Um, is eight to 10 inches. So it is like supposed to be a little bit more oversized. So that one I made a size five, but that size five is a 54 inch. So it's four extra inches. The gauge is less, you, you know, or, you know, less dense. So that makes sense. Um, and I think fingering weight because the drape is so different than DK that, uh, although she made the DK, like her version was fingering plus a fluff. And that I think also has a lot of drape. But regardless, it is a little different in sizing. Um, I am using the, actually, what needle size am I using? I think I went down a needle size. Yes, I'm using three millimeter needles. I recommended is 3.25. I was a little bit, um, I had too few stitches, right? So I was a little bit too big um, at the 3.25, which is recommended. I... Um, okay, so I whipped through the little saddle shoulders. Also, the saddle shoulder shoulders are different than the Skyline. Similar in construction style to the Calm Down Cardigan um, in that the saddle shoulder sits, then you pick up the front and the back, you add short rows, you do whatever, and then um, you join in the round. There's no round for a cardigan, but you join flat, you know, join them together. The jug just chose the strangest place to lay. Okay, whatever. We let her do what she wants to do. Um, so I made both of the saddles this week and I joined them. Um, it looks like it's joined in the round because I only had like just near me when I was doing this and purely because I didn't feel like getting up. Um, I only had one uh, holder and I didn't want to cut it. So I just decided to loop both stitch holders, you know, both sides together. So it's sort of joined in the round, <laughs> but it's, it's very much not. It's still, knit, I'm still knitting flat. I am now onto the straight back rows. I did all of the short rows, actually almost all of them in the car also going down. So this is lifting the back, then the neckline, then I will pick up front. I will knit that to join for the neckline, knit it flat, join it, you know, all the good stuff. Um, but yes, I'm sorry. I was saying that the the ribbing on this I think is different than the the DK version. For some reason, I think that's like a two by two. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a three by one. Also, just like looks different, obviously because of this. And I think it is wider than the pullover. Um. Okay. There we go. It looks really nice. This yarn is um. Grenwy. Why didn't I? I don't think I wrote it down. Um, Three Sisters sock yarn in um, which is a 85 Superwash Marina 15% um, nylon and it is 437 yards per 100 grams. So it's, yeah, it's looking super nice. I am not really alternating skeins. Um, and I think that the two shoulder pads like look really similar and because I actually, so I did two skeins and I did them two at a time. I just did them both because they're identical. And then I slipped them both off the stitches and kept one yarn connected and, and started the back. It's really hard to do short row shaping. I actually don't even know if you can do that helical or, you know, switching your skeins. Um, I think that the skeins look pretty similar, but I will likely, um, now that I am doing flat back rows, join the other skein and I will helical knit this. Not helical flat because you just switch every two rows, but once I get to join in the body, I will also, I will actually helical knit. And I have one skein, that's the end. So, you know, it's like things like doing, picking up the front and you do one side for some and then you do the other. I will likely also do two different skeins, one than the other 
and knit them either at the same time or whatever. Um, but when I join, I'll just pick one, do a couple of rows and then join so that eventually when I helical knit in the third skein, I won't just join it all at once. Like I will have one will have more yarn on it left than the other. Okay. I don't know that that's important to you, but if you are confused about helical knitting, it is not very confusing. Sometimes you do have to think about what you intend to do for all of your yarns and making sure you have enough to swap in all your skeins. Um, I think it's important actually to, to if you're going to helical knit the body that you helical knit the sleeves or at least parts of the sleeves so that you don't accidentally get like a totally different color between the two um, pieces, but I don't know. Maybe it's not that important. Okay. Uh, what else do I have to say about that? Nothing. I think those are all my whips. A lot of whips right now. Um, I'm feeling saturated, but also I'm so excited about the yarn I bought. So Ooh. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do books right now and then we'll talk about Row City. So I think I always put chapters in if you need to skip, you can. Um, I don't have tons to share about books this week because I feel like the week just like zoomed by um like so so fast because we were gone Thursday night got down to Portland that was a whirlwind 24 hours that's we weren't even in Portland for 24 hours um but collectively with driving back and forth it was just over <laughs> it went quickly um I don't think I actually finished any books this week I think that's true. So I spent some time reading Lord of Chaos, which is the sixth book in the Wheel of Time series. Reminder, this is 14 books. You're going to hear about this for the next, I don't know how many months. I am trying to get through it this year. That's like semi my intention, though that's maybe not going to happen. And that's okay. This dog. Um, it's okay if I don't, but I would like to get close-ish to finishing at least this year, um, which means I just have to like I, I turn it on a couple times a week and just listen for a few hours. I was telling Charlotte this, like, it is a little bit, like, emotionally taxing because so much happens all the time and, like, lots of it is bad. <laughs> Not, like, scary bad or even really gory bad, but just, like, stressful for the characters. They're making a lot of life decisions and decisions that are going to affect, like, all of humanity and their world and, like, they are itty bitty dummy babies. And so like, sometimes they make bad choices. Sometimes they're guided to make bad choices by people who should be guiding them to make better choices. Sometimes main characters die, not main. Well, so far in book six, the very most main characters who I will not name for you in case you're reading this, they have not died yet. I mean, I don't know, maybe they will, who knows. Um, but other important characters inevitably are not going to make it in a struggle of good versus evil, right? So sometimes I just have to put it down. Oh, so actually I lied. I was just looking at my thing and I did finish one book. I finished the second book of um, The War of Lost Hearts, which is um, called Children of Fallen Gods. And it was very good and so much chaos at the end like so crazy the culmination was like very big and very very dramatic um I I liked I I very much like this series this is a series by Carissa Broadbent it is the first of any books I've been reading by Carissa Broadbent I really enjoy her characters like all the side characters she's brought in like most characters have some dimension um there are a couple that she's made a little one note like maybe that just don't feel as important and like also when you get introduced to them you're not like finding out all the complexity to start but there are some interesting characters like one that you get introduced to in like the very beginning who like the main character is like she basically can't get a read on her like she can't tell if she's bad or good um and you find out a lot and like I think the question still maybe sits with the reader of is she bad or good not or just like did she make decisions the for for what she could figure out was the best solution like it was just it's very morally gray and I like that I think it's very interesting um 
The third book I did start is called Mother of Death and Dawn. And that has been good. I'm like relatively close to the end, but that one also feels emotionally taxing because like so much stuff is happening. Um, kind of like when you get to the second half of any Saturday mass book and you're like, whoa, except for I needed a break from this. Um, also because we were going to Portland and I didn't read while we were there. But the break is that I was like, you know what? I mean, that's a lot of heavy kind of fantasy, good versus evil things happening right now. I would like a love story. So and there's a love story in that book uh, for sure. But I wanted a um, different kind of love story, <laughs> modern romance. So I uh, got a bunch of these books that were on like my TBR list from watching BookTube recommendations. And this one is called You Again. Um, and it is by Kate Goldbeck and the um one of the I think it's a debut yeah debut romance but and one of the like little things on Goodreads like to read this is like from someone else you know some critic or whatever it was just like it's a gender flipped Harry when Harry met Sally sort of right it's kind of like yeah p two people who keep crossing paths um in different parts of their life and uh, do not like each other to start um sort of misery loves company became friends and then you know I'm not even to the more part yet so well we'll see how that goes it's really interesting um the characters are yeah very they're they're like lovable but also um they kind of also just don't have their lives together so it's also like they're sort of tragic but yeah um I I really like it so far I'm like maybe a little less than halfway through and having having a good time uh that's all for reading okay let's go right into Rose City actually no pause pause we're not going to we are going to start with an acquisition that is not Rose City. So I went on the D stash discord just the other week. Um, somebody posted this and I just wanted them. So I got them and we actually just did a swap. So I did not pay anything for these. I gave her some hand dyed fingering and she gave me four skeins of this linen quill, which um, I have never knit with before. It is 50% fine Highland wool. 35% alpaca, 15% linen, and it is from Pearl Soho. This color is called Kettle Black. If you'll remember, I just got some extra linen yarn, um, the Stratus Fingering, which is a higher linen content and definitely more, this is softer. I'm sure the drape is going to also be incredible, but it's like that, that other Stratus Fingering is very confusing because it feels not as soft as this, but when I knit it and then washed it, it was incredibly soft. So there's that information for you. It's not helpful to you because it's just like a feeling I got from it. But um, yeah, sorry. These are fingering weight. So it's 439 yards for 100 grams. Um, I'm excited to try this. I have heard really good things. Um, again, with like, I mean, a black would be nice for a summer top. That's like, it's because of all the linen in it, it is very much more like a heathery look, um, even though it's like basically black yarn. Uh, so I have enough to make even like a lightweight sweater with this and I don't know what I will do. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm leaning more towards like t-shirt, but maybe I'll do like a tunicky t-shirt, like something a little bit more drapey and maybe a little longer. I have no pattern yet, um, but I've been pinning a lot of summer things of things I saw last year I want to make. And I want to leave creative space for summer patterns this year because there's inevitably going to be a lot of great things that come out that I may make for next year. Um, I cannot get enough things done seasonally for me to just like make all of the things as they come out, as I'm sure you feel the same way. Um, but yeah. Okay. So that was acquisition one. Um, and I traded for it. So it's really only like getting two skeins for my stash counter, but also it was free. So there's that. Uh, I, and I actually got rid of two things that are, they were single skeins, which I don't tend to do a lot of things with right now. Um, I'm, I'm I haven't been really knitting socks and I don't make tons of fingering weight beanies or single skein shawls. 
they weren't things that would work in a fade for what I had. And they were also like not colors I absolutely like needed to keep. So it was, it felt very okay getting them out of my wall. I um, bought yarn at Rose City. So let's just talk about, I'll talk, I'll talk you through what we did first before we went to buy yarn. Cause we got there on Thursday night. So we left Seattle um, and we were driving down and um right before we left i had seen that rachel is knitting and leslie from knit california so if you don't watch they both have podcasts they're both like more frequent instagram users slash story person persons um and i like you know have been following both of them for, for years and uh they posted that they were doing a meetup rachel's from Oregon and so I think she's maybe seeing the family or whatever and Leslie is from Southern California yeah, California yes I don't know if I, I said that I did say that um anyway she it was visiting Rachel because they are friends met in real life at the uh Ireland yarn trip which also is something I would have loved to go on but you know I have a new baby <laughs> she's not that new anymore but she was pretty new at the time uh, anyway, that was last year. I think they're doing another one, maybe this year. <coughs> um, but I like mentioned it to the car and I was like, maybe if we make it there kind of in time, do you guys want to get dinner? They were meeting at like a food truck place, which is a big thing in Portland for food carts, food trucks. Um, that also alleviates the having to pick a food everybody wants to eat. Um, and yeah, so that's what we decided to do. And we met up and I'll pop a picture up. Somebody, I did not take pictures. Somebody else took this picture and posted it on Instagram. It was very fun. We got a big table. We got to meet some other yarn crawlers, knit lovers, yarn enthusiasts. There were crocheters and knitters both there. Um, and that was really fun. It was nice. I like did the, uh, what is she calling it? Like yarny book club or whatever uh, with Anna from Story and Stitches, which is Rachel's older sister. And so, you know, I met Rachel actually on Zoom the other week. And then um, Leslie and I have messaged a couple of times. So it was like, nice. It's like online friends in real life. Yeah, great. Um, they're both super lovely. Everybody else who came was really lovely. Very funny. Uh, my husband, when he joined the company he still works for, they're, uh, they were a lot smaller, like really small. And so like holiday parties and stuff, there was like, you got to meet everybody in the company. Um, also pre pandemic, just not like so much, but like a couple years pre pandemic. So it was, um, they, they are such a lovely group of people. One of the women who he works with, like found out I was a crafter and I don't know how, like they just, you know, I, I had yarn in, we shared an office. There was yarn in the office. So I think she must've seen it on a call, asked, whatever. Um, her name is Dion. She's lovely. Um, and I knew cause we actually became Ravelry friends at some point in that time of when they worked together. And I, uh, knew like that she bought like hand dyed yarn, but I like haven't seen her in years. Um, they don't work together anymore. And, uh, we get down there and I was like, man, that woman at the end of the table looks super familiar. And then when I came back in from ordering food, she was like, Megan. And I was like, Dion, <laughs> it's like, someone out of context. It's like sometimes really hard to be like, do I know them or am I just making that up? Um, but yeah, so I got to uh, reconnect with an old friend and she still lives here in Washington. So maybe we shall meet up. She is a big crocheter though. I don't think she knits at all, um, but she makes some really lovely crochet things, both like garments and other, um, which is super fun. Okay. What else do I have to say? That was Thursday night. We got back to, we got to the house cause we stayed in a house really close to Nadia Lamb, which is not in Portland. It is in whatever the town is called that it's in you like like further out the burbs it's in the burbs um and we just decided to stay at a house really close to there a because it was like easy for airbnb we knew we weren't gonna like needing we weren't doing a lot of like portland sightseeing otherwise we weren't staying for a long time so it was convenient to be there the house we stayed in was so cute i didn't like take a video or anything but it was like really mega cute it was like a little victorian two story, but like the decorations were really cute. Like everything super cute. Um, 
we played some Plate Up, which is a Nintendo Switch game that I had never heard of, but someone has been playing. That was very fun. Uh, yeah, we just hung out in it a little bit on for on Friday morning. Um, this was why we went to get some Explorer Knits yarn. Also to go to a couple other yarn stores if we felt like the energy and no one had to rush home or whatever. Um, we knew we were going to get up early and we did to go uh, wait in line at Naughty Lamb. We literally stayed like blocks away. So we were super close. Um, and we like waited in the car for a while. And then we decided to like wait out by the building and then other people started showing up and it was too early. We got there too early, but also like it was fine because we were up and then like Charlotte and I walked several blocks away to get coffee. We met the absolute nicest little old lady she she was going into the same coffee shop as us and stopped us just by the door and like we didn't know what she was gonna ask us right like help up help ordering you know whatever but no she was like can I tell you ladies my coffee jokes and I was like I want to be you and yes absolutely please tell me your coffee jokes I will tell you one of them which I think was her strongest joke she told us some others um here's the joke what do you call a cow that has just given birth? Decaffeinated. Okay, that's it. <laughs> I hope you giggled. Um, Charlotte and I thought they were pretty good. Plus, she was so sweet. So, uh, that was fun. Then we just hung out and had breakfast at Naughty Lamb outside. Um, and then, yeah, so there were lots of people before the store opened. So, we were the first in line because we got there too early. But also, like, what's too early when you're the first in line? You know, we started the line. Um, but there were lots of other people. And I couldn't, I don't know how many people were there at the beginning. But like many, because it, there. I'm going to say wrapped around the block. But really just the building. The building is like, you know, not a super big building. But has like a parking lot. And so like a walkway that goes around the side of it. And I don't know how many people were in line, you know, after. Dozens, several dozens of people. The Naughty Lamb is not a huge store. They didn't particularly crowd control as people were going in in the in the first rush of people. We knew where Allie was setting up right in the back. Allie and Darren from Explorer Knits were both there. Um, and it was just the two of them and they set everything up and um, we saw them going in because we're the first line. They showed up after we did, which is very reasonable for them to show up, you know, an hour before whatever to set up. Um, but we, so we went back to the table, we got our yarn. There were, a, I mean, it was kind of a crush of people, but also like people were being respectful. Nobody was like pushing or doing anything crazy. The kind of, I mean, they brought a lot of colors and sort of unfortunately is like the, the table was like just jammed enough that with so many people grabbing, there was a lot of like people having to just pull, pull things back off the floor. Luckily, this was not a woolen folk kind of thing where it was not a muddy floor. So it was okay. Uh, all yarn was rescued. Um, but they were just like refilling and restocking all the normal bases. So I think they brought like Denali fingering, Rocky's DK, Carlsbad worsted. And then they also brought, oh, and sorry. And then they brought um, the earthy sock and earthy DK. And those were just on the back table with one of every color. And you could ask them to go in the back to get more. Because again, there was like, there's not infinite room in a small yarn shop. So they did the best they could. Um, that system actually worked pretty well. People were, again being nice no one was like ripping yarn on anyone else's hands like I think everybody hopefully that when they got there it was like Allie and Darren brought a ton of yarn like they brought plenty um there was still yarn when we left which was several hours later like two hours later because the line was very long there was some changing of plans in the middle of buying seeing yarns next to each other that was Sylvan um added yarn that was me and Charlotte. Uh, yeah, for projects and like thinking it through. And also we just want to look in the rest of the store. But like once the line formed, it was like kind of hard to get around people. So we were like, you know, going to a corner, kind of like looking at everything, like going to another area, looking at everything, like just just kind of like getting getting around the store. Um, the other pop ups that were at Naughty Lamb also was Jen from JP Knits Things. Um, I chatted with her for a while. A little while um she's super nice and I th I've mentioned her several times before but she is a designer um and she is a designer whose 
one of her goals, I think, and I'm just, this is not straight from her mouth, right? This is my paraphrasing of like things I've heard in her. She has a podcast also. Um, but like in her posts and other things is like d thoughtful designs that give you customization suggestions um, that make things fit well. Suggestions being the key term. You don't have to do all of the things. You can do other things to make them fit well. But she's also like posted resources before on like adding bust darts or shaping to lots of different types of garments. Like, you know, kind of things to educate knitters how to make patterns work for you. And while I think that's great, and I think you should definitely look through some of those resources, especially if you're a bustier person and you don't always want the extra drape underneath. Like some garments like this one, it's great. Like this is a boxy fit on purpose. I don't always want that. Um, and sometimes patterns don't have suggestions, but also she has lots of educational for garment designers so that garment designers also do some of the work for you. Like here's how they would work or where I suggest putting them or what kind of bust out would work or, you know, just other like, broad shoulder suggestions. She was super nice. I also didn't realize she's from Pennsylvania. I love meeting people from Pennsylvania. I think she lives in Pittsburgh. So like the other side of the state. Um, but that's, it's still my home state. A lot of love for Pennsylvania. Um, there was also, um, tomato moon bags. Um, so those were the three pop-ups the day before, uh, Ruby and Roses yarn co was there and I'm so sad I missed Addie because I just bought some Taylor Swift yarn I think she had the whole collection out I don't know if you could buy any of it then maybe she brought some of like some extras or whatever um but I'm I did talk to Leslie about this and she said she was like oh, it looks so amazing like she got to see it all live and she can't wait to um get her pre-order which I can also not wait to get mine okay uh so Here's what I bought from Naughty Lamb. This tomato moon bag. I will say, just, you know, I know a lot of you guys are project, a lot of knitters are project bag uh, specialists, curators. You like the kind you like. You have many of them. You get gifted them. You've bought them from whatever. I have actually never bought myself a project bag that, like, a nice one like this. I... My mom has made me several uh, in styles I have, like, shown her. I also, she made them for, like, our whole knitting group for Christmas. I don't know if I ever told you guys that. That was very fun. <laughs> it was like, my present via my mother. Um, and I made, like, I got the little tiny flock project bag. I got the big flock tote bag, but I wouldn't call that a project bag. Project bag being, like, has special pockets, you know, has some, some things that are, like, intended for a single project or maybe one or two. Okay. So this is my first one and a getting something like this tax free because this is a rather expensive buy it is amazing to get a tax free. Um, there is no sales tax in Oregon in case you did not know. Uh, and also I just really loved this pattern so much. Um, here is a fun fact about myself. I don't actually like flying bugs very much. I am like mildly locally allergic to all things that sting so like I don't just get tiny mosquito bites I get like really large really hard mosquito bites um same if I get like stung by anything which unfortunately I seem to get stung a lot by things <laughs> um but I but I really love like bee patterned things and like I don't love butterflies on things but I like really like moths which I would I would call this a moth um but like mushrooms and wildlife things love it's not my vibe to ever wear something that is like patterned like this or whatever, but I love to have things around me. I also love this wax canvas back. Um, yeah. So this bag is super beautiful and these are pockets, which how fun is that? A little pocket here. Um, and uh, two of them, sorry. And then the drawstring at the top. And this is all of the yarn I bought at Rose City. And I am not even like, I don't even have to be, I can be like totally closed. I did buy a lot of yarn. This bag holds a lot of yarn skeins. That is good. This will absolutely fit an entire sweater. That is key here. Okay, let's go through what I bought from Explorer Knits. I only bought Explorer Knits while I was at 
um, Naughty Lamb. Though I did see other things I liked. Like there was only a very little bit of Ruby and Rose's yarn you could buy. There were some like they had bought just for the shop to sell. Um, nothing that was like left over from her her um, trunk show the day before. But I, um, yeah, I really, there were, there were there were things that I liked, but I this was a lot of yarn that I got and so I just like did not fill anything else in my cart okay here we go um a couple things I had planned and I will tell you about those first so I got a sweater quantity of this this is um so what did Allie and Darren bring they brought mostly Iceland collection they brought some of the um bright neon tonals they also brought like Dear Duomo rose quartz like a couple of other to round it out colors uh that like best sellers from previous things right um this color is called blue lagoon and this i believe was actually just a mini in the sock set from like the day box and i don't quote me on this because i did not get any of these i didn't get any iceland yarns i don't want to i don't want to show too much of what else is in here um but i uh saw this picture so Allie and Darren just like posted one post of like all of the full skeins they were bringing and they brought all of the colors and all of the bases right this is earthy dk um so it is slightly slightly paler but still bright as bright as the like um any of the superwash bases and I know this because I will put a picture up actually let me do it at the end so that I don't ruin what I'm what I, I bought to talk you through it um but we did a flat lay and uh Katie also got some of this yarn and like they're right next to each other and clearly do look like the same color um but they do have a slight tonal difference which is gonna happen with earthy dk um this is very much like just a tonal there's not tons of change of depth or anything there's a little bit like just by nature of hand dyeing um but it looks very consistent. It's super cute. It's very bright and light. It's going to look really summery and cute on me. I'm so excited. I got this to make a um, Uptown Pullover, which is a new pattern that came out like two weeks ago, maybe, by Tori Yu, Tori Knits NYC. Because I'm test knitting for her now, I know I'm going to get a free pattern as a thank you for testing. And I'm going to choose that pattern because I, the Uptown T came out last year and that's fingering weight, I think again don't quote me on any of this like I have no idea the pullover though is DK what I really like about the pullover is I feel like it's so the sleeves are the, like like a lattice right so it's just like a plain stockinette I cord finished top but the whole sleeve like I think it's, it's a raglan so like the sleeve from here you know the whole middle even is like this latticey lace work and I absolutely love it's like a fishnet almost like kind of look the sleeve I don't know what it is about it but like I think it's like so like and her sample is also like red and like I don't know it's like so sexy there's like something about it not even like on Tori just like there's something about that to me that I'm like oh my god I would be so cute in that <laughs> so that's what I want to make it's like a date night summer top but also for here that's kind of a perfect sweater because I bet I could wear that so much of the year loose and cool on my arms but still a DK weight like wool and not be overheated so I think that's a really great choice if I do say so myself this is why I got this yarn okay um the other thing I had planned was I don't know if you guys can hear that tapping. I'm really sorry, but the dog is having a dream and there is a cardboard box in my office and she is dreaming and tapping her, like she's running in her dream and keeps tapping her foot. <laughs> she's cute. Um, okay. I got some Sergata Familia. I did not get any of this when I bought from the Spain collection. If you'll remember, um, sorry, I didn't tell you also earthy DK in case you don't know is hundred percent non superwash Merino 246 yards for hundred grams. So heavier weight than their Rockies DK a little bit closer to like a true DK. Um, but it's so soft. Like this is a superwash and this is the earthy. And I think I could probably tell the difference because it feels like it has a little bit more bloom than this slightly like tighter spun superwash. But like the fabric that would be made would be very similar and like so incredibly soft. I'm so excited. Okay. 
This is actually Carlsbad Worsted. So this is 100% Superwash Merino, 218 yards for 100 grams. If you'll remember, I just made something out of Carlsbad Worsted and it was my um, Ripple Crop Top Worsted. That's what this is for, but not for me because no, I don't want to wear this color. Like it was my worry in the Spain collection. I was one of the colors like I regretted not buying because it's so beautiful. And I think it's so fun and I want to knit with it because it's so gorgeous. I don't want to wear this. This to me doesn't do a lot. It's a little bit too yellow undertone. There's too much orange in it. I don't like it for me. It also like, like to me, it like looks a little bit like, I just personally don't gravitate towards like this, like, like pastel rainbow, right? Like it's not it's a personal choice. Um, but you know who will look fantastic in this? my kid. This is like right up her alley. Um, I think she's going to be a soft summer. Her hair's not really grown in enough for me to, to really determine, but I think she'll be a soft summer. Maybe she'll even be a spring who knows, but, um, I am going to make her a ripple crop top mini. No, that's not a pattern. I don't believe. Um, but because it's just a three by three rib, I can make it whatever size I want. I'm going to do a little bit of like pseudo math because I know what mine blocked out to be. And my plan is to make it so that she could wear it right now as a dress without a lot of stretch in the ribbing. And like, because you can like do some, you know, dimensions on like 2T, 3T, 4T sizes. I would love for her to be able to wear this up until she's like four ish. Because again, kids rapidly grow like as far as number of pounds they gain until they're like one year and a little bit. And then they really peter off to just getting longer and a little bit bigger. But the rib cages don't actually grow as rapidly as from like very baby to a year, right? So um like proportionally, right? So I think I can make her a transitional tunicky dress business to a essentially like tank top. I'm not going to put sleeves on it. Probably I'll see how much yarn is left over because maybe I'll make her like three quarter E sleeves that then, um, you know, get bigger, but I don't want to like the armholes look so nice on this when it's done. Like I said before, I could totally make this as a tank top, which is why I like thought of it for the baby. Cause I don't have to worry then about yarn length and stuff. It's also something I could always rip those out and redo them and, uh, you know, adjust as she gets bigger. But you've heard me say this. I, ha I don't make a ton of baby clothes. I've only made her one sweater. Um, and not because I don't love her. Um, and I don't want to make her things. It's just that she's like a very gross baby right now. And that is okay. I mean, like, like, you should have seen her at breakfast this morning. She had some peanut butter toast as part of her breakfast. And all she did was get peanut butter, A, all over her face. Like not a little bit, not around her mouth. Like every part of her face had peanut butter on it. And then like she just kept touching her hair. You want me to put hand at things on that child? I don't think so. <laughs> but I do actually think like for, for pictures, like to go do a couple of things. Also because we have like longer awake times. We're up to, we're down to one nap. Um the longer awake times allow me to like plan to do pictures or if we go do something, she can wear her super fun dress where she may not like be eating <laughs> for a little bit. Um, yeah. So, uh, a transitional piece. And I think she will love these colors, the super bright colors. Like even as she gets a little bit older, she does love clothes. So like, you know, maybe she'll have all these fashion opinions when she's two or three, my nieces do. And, uh, you know, from the age of three on, they, they all had many opinions on what they were wearing. So something that just fits her until she's three would be a goal. Okay. Um, this, I was in the back of my mind thinking that I would want, and let me talk about, you know, the same exact top. I love the ripple crop top worsted. I also have the ripple crop top pattern, which is the fingering weight one. I will probably make that in the near future. That does not have negative ease. It has positive ease. So it will be a little bit drapier intended, right? You can do whatever you want yet again, but I want a, in my neon era, ripple crop top DK, which is not a pattern. Um, but again, because your ribbing can be whatever you want, I think I would have more rows, but I would have a slightly less dense fabric, which I think would be fantastic for the summer. And also this color is so amazing. I did get Rocky's DK, which I just knit with also is a hundred percent superwash merino, 274 yards for hundred grams. As we 
have talked about many times, this is an unbalanced yarn. It is a Z on S on, okay, Z twisted, S plied, S plied. Like, that's what we've decided. <laughs> yarn um so it does create like a little bit of that effect where it my stitches lean um lean or like have more have one side tighter than the other in the stitch I don't care I'm going to continue using it for things she think it would be really nice in a um in a ribbed pattern I was wearing my in my neon era beanie uh, my brownstone beanie that I made there and I really like that beanie on me I think it like is a good saturated pink color for me to wear which is also influenced this decision I semi had that plan in the back of my head but um I may have just like last minute been like yes I want that um do I think in my neon era will continue to come back and like I could have waited a year to buy this yeah of course but like if I want it anyway, maybe I want to make this sooner rather than later. Okay, here is um, one plan. This was the last yarn that I bought at Naughty Lamb that absolutely was not planned. But we were standing in line um, or chatting at the table with Allie and Darren or someone was still looking at yarn. I don't know. We were there. We went back to the table, essentially. Charlotte had already checked out because she checked out first. She had like just a couple things, got them, was like waiting on us. The rest of us and we're standing by the table and um you know if you just keep standing next to beautiful yarn it's more likely that you're going to purchase more of it and that's what happened so charlotte was like looking at a um i don't know which one that is thing national park maybe it's like the orangey one um the surrey and she was like maybe i want to make a cumulus blouse or something surrey held double sweater and I was like standing there and I said, and I was also looking at this color from the Iceland collection, which by the way, Blue Lagoon, in case you've never been to Iceland or haven't heard about it, is like the super touristy um, lagoon you can go to. And lagoons are like geothermal pools in Iceland naturally occur because it's a volcanic island. Um, and so that is like the biggest one. And I don't know if they treat the water or if the water really does this naturally, but it is that color blue. Like if you look at pictures of people going to Blue Lagoon, it is like this color blue. The water is. It's incredible. Mike and I did not go there when we went to Iceland. Mike's family is from Iceland. His mom's side is 100% is Icelandic, came from Iceland two generations ago or whatever. So um, it's a special place we have been and we did not go to Blue Lagoon when we went, um, partly because some of our friends gave us the feedback of like, it's pretty touristy, you know, whatever. Um, I think it's pretty close, like closer to the airport. Also, we stayed in Reykjavik and his cousin told us there is this incredible sort of hidden gem lagoon and told us to go there instead. So we did like a big like day where we did like the golden loop kind of, and like we did a bunch of stuff and we went to that geothermal pool. And it was a really special experience. It was really, really pretty. But one of the things we saw when we were going through all the things, we went all the way down to Vik and had dinner and went to like the iceware store and um, yeah, went to the beach, all these things that people do. Um, but we did go and stop by Skogafoss. And Skogafoss is this really incredible, huge waterfall that is just it's like on the side of the road. You can just pull over. There's a small parking lot. You can, um, but I was like looking at Skogafoss, which I really like the color, but I really, really liked it in this Surrey. Yes, I have other blue Surreys in my stash, but I have been thinking about making another Ashling. I was just like wearing it several times in the last couple of weeks. And I was like, I really love this sweater. I would really love it in a dark color. Cause that's like a very bright colored thing, which is fine. I am here for some more saturated, bright jewel tones, but I thought it would be nice to have like a sedate version of it. <laughs> so, um, this is Skogafoss in Surrey. I got enough to make an Ashling. If I wanted to make something else, I would probably have to hold it with something else then or whatever. It, it is, it is not a ton. I didn't get a ton of yardage, but it's such a pretty color. Um, I don't think that this light is doing it justice. It's like kind of too bright on it, but there is these light patches, these almost purpley, like navy, like it's a navy patch. It's very pretty. I mean, it's a Surrey. So yeah, 
it's got it's surreys i feel like never show that well in the skein and then once you start making with them you can see all of the variation like all of you know how, how variegated it really is once it's being made okay there we go that is what i got ekf yes it's a lot of yarn no i did not quite need all that much yarn yes i'm a little bit panic buyed but not panic buyed but i was just like i just wanted it i want it because it's here we are also going to see ali and darren on bay merge island this coming weekend which means I will also probably not film till next Sunday because we are going to be there and I'd love to talk about that with you. So yes, um, they are bringing the Seattle collection there though and it is not the same yarn. So I bought things that I'm not going to get next weekend. I also don't know that I will buy so much next weekend. I do love a lot of the Seattle collection yarns and those are special to me because I'm here, right? Like I've got Pike Place, which I made something in. I'm not into Gumwall, which that pink is just like not my shade of pink, right? It's almost too like warm of a pink or too almost pastel-y. Anyway, um, there are a couple of the other colors though. Like I really love the Squim yarn. Squim is like, um, actually it's not, it's not that close to this, but what I always think of, it's like almost like the a grayer version of this. Like it's a very truly like a gray lavender. Um, which I think is great. Might as well take a drink. Um, and yeah, so maybe I'll get, I don't know. I, I don't have not decided yet because I also want to see like what all they intend to bring so I can make some plans. Um, I do have an idea in mind for a squim sweater and I might limit it to that. Um, I, that one very much so I am not going over there to buy yarn. Actually, there's a couple other things I want at La Mercerie, um, and, um, would love to grab before they're closed for a couple of weeks, which in case you didn't know, they are moving. They announced this this past week, I think. Um, so right after the event, like that, I don't know, the next day, I think they, they're shutting their doors at that location and they are moving like two blocks away. Um, and they'll be closed for a very short period of time and maybe still doing online orders, just not in person until they set up the other store. Um, which is so exciting because they're actually taking over the church mouse space. Um, and that is like a right on the strip of Bainbridge. It's, yeah, it's really cool. So, um, let's see but I there's there are a couple of things I would like to get there and like if it's gonna be really crazy busy I I don't need it I can wait um but yeah we went to um a bunch of other stores so again you know it's the beginning of the year I'm definitely not stash negative like even remotely um I have already completed several projects and I've got lots of things planned. Will I be stash negative? I don't know. That's a really great question. I think for me this year, I did have a goal to be 10,000 yards stash negative, but I have never calculated. A, I did never have a year, full year of like kind of heavy garment making. So I don't know. Um, I also last year did not actually calculate how much yardage I truly knit or crocheted. This year, I will have that number. So I could also make a better plan of like how many skeins reasonably or like yardage bringing in would let me be stash negative. I'm guessing this year I'm trying to be kind of smart, but also like a lot of beautiful things are happening. I still have some room on the yarn wall because of things I've de-stashed or also made projects with. And it, this is, you know, it's my choice, my yarn. <laughs> um, but all of this to say, next weekend, I don't think I'll buy quite as much. Um, and I wasn't intending to buy anything more than what I got from EKF. We actually did think we would go to like maybe just one other yarn store, but like we, we were done pretty early at Naughty Lamb. We got a snack. We wanted to go to a very fun, um, kind of like late lunch place and they didn't open till three. So we had time to kill. So we went to a couple of places. We went to Weird Sisters. We went to Ritual Dyes. We went to, oh, there's a place right down. We, that is a one block away from Ritual Dyes. That's like more of a, more of a generic local yarn store, but they also have weaving there 
and like so weaving threads and some dye kits and some um like undyed uh fiber I don't remember what that one was called um but before we went to those last two we went to um Starlight Knitting Society that is a really cute store Ritual Dyes is cute but Ritual Dyes really reminds me of like spin cycle like their store typically I think is mostly just ritual dyes yarn which is the same idea as like spin cycle is spin cycle yarn with a couple of supporting yarn things um so like I think they carry Sandus Garn and um Durerum Natura like maybe just all the time plus ritual dyes uh yarn and it was great like they have really beautiful things uh we were all like I think a little yarned like we wanted to see the things and also just like it's fun to go you know see other knitters or whatever but um I don't think anything anybody had like really things in mind um yeah weird sisters was really nice I think that's the one that is also a bookstore so that was also kind of fun I was like looking through some stuff um they had some very nice yarns um I got to chat with um ex libris the diner um and not Brad not bad Brit was there yeah let me think what else okay but we went to starlight um I was not going to buy any yarn and actually if I bought yarn I really thought I was going to buy there was this like bend Oregon yarn and I cannot remember the name of me the name of it but if I see I don't even know if I took a picture of any of the yarn but if I can find it I'll like put it in the description section they had some really beautiful different blends of yarn and they were really like some really soft ones like they had a british dk that was very nice blend um and they were all tonals they were pretty um that was their one of their trunk, trunk shows at starlight and i was like eyeing one i was like ooh, this is really pretty there weren't any colors that were really screaming to me though i just like really liked the feel of the yarn and you know i like to try a different base but then katie brought this over to me so i'm blaming katie for this one completely she brought this over to me and it is just um the most perfect color and i'm gonna hold it up next to something else in a second but this is a a farmer's daughter fibers um i think we decided uh sylvan looked it up and i'm gonna say this is very interesting this is exclusively made for starlight knitting society and they are zodiac colors and um Katie brought me what is actually both of us we are we are both um on the cusp of Sagittarius um and so this is the Sagittarius color and it is so pretty are you gonna focus on this there we go it's super pretty it's a pretty color interestingly on this band there is no information on what this yarn is the um like the fiber content or the yardage it is a fingering weight I think it's 437 for 100 grams Sylvan did look it up for me and I think it's 100% superwash merino so um that's what it feels like and it's a beautiful color I got a couple skeins of this for a tea um because and I have been thinking about it because I saw one other while we were there um color that was really similar but it wasn't quite as saturated or like quite the the tone but if you'll see these look pretty similar <laughs> no I did not have this with me but I know what color it is I've been so excited to wear this color that I decided like a few weeks ago I was like maybe I should really get some more of this color to make a t-shirt with because I think I will really enjoy it so I looked up a couple of patterns on Ravelry while we were there just to like determine about what I would need for a t-shirt quantity and like if there was a t-shirt I had in mind um I might actually hold this double and make a DK weight t-shirt. That is a thought right now. Um, or a DK weight tank top or a something. I could do a fingering t-shirt also. I'm not committed to anything. Again, with the, I would like to keep my options open for this year. If I don't have an intention right this second, I'm obviously not going to put pick this up and put this on my needles right now. But many, many, many t-shirt patterns are going to be flooding in over the next couple of months and so maybe I will find one that is perfect for this a tonal also makes it a little bit easier because if I want to do a little bit of color work I could easily find something that goes with this like black or white <laughs> that would be 
what I would gravitate to. Um, but also like I could just make something, anything, anything I want with this. Um, because there's a little bit of color depth for sure, but it's not very, um, it's not a semi-solid, it's a tonal, but you know, like you can see here, there are light and dark streaks, but I think the difference in that in a knitted fabric would not be like distracting in cables or something. That is what I bought. It was a lot of yarn. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we did all the yarn shops. Um, we went to a place, the snack place that we went to, which is like, didn't open until three, but that's where we had our, our late lunch is called cheese and crack. That's a hilarious name for a place. Um, it's very small, but they have like fancy charcuterie question mark. I would call it kind of fancy. It's mostly just charcuterie, but they do like a brie brulee. They like, that was very good. Um, they have some homemade crackers and they also have soft serve there that they put into very fun Sundays. And so we got, you know, snacks and a couple of us got dessert and it was lovely. And then we drove home. And so, you know, I didn't have to work. That was nice to take a day off. Um, we did not get home super late. I drove the, the way back. Traffic was great. A little bit annoying to get out of Portland, but that was fine. But we had missed all of the Seattle traffic by the time we were coming home. And um, we did a flat lay. Okay, so here is our flat lay. I will probably just put it over top of my whole face right now. Um, and you can see a lot of color. I mean, like, yes, EKF brought a lot of colors, but like we tended to pick, there were a lot of colors that, that overlapped. Um, I actually think, I don't remember what, sh I'm, I'm like now just trying to think so you can see the picture, but I don't know, um, what Charlotte's third color is, but she maybe is the only one that completely, oh no, she got pepperoncini. Um, so yeah, there, everybody has a little overlap. Woohoo. Here we go. It was good. It was, it was yarn, fun yarn. Um, we did also, uh, take a picture with Allie and Darren, which I don't, I, there's not a place I would have put that in before. So here it is. That was very fun to take a picture with them. We chatted with them for a little bit and they're both just like so nice and super lovely. And I think that's a, a one of the reasons we have a little bit of like knit group loyalty to them. Um, I also think and like, you can buy yarn from whoever you want, right? You could buy from always the same dyer. You could do like me. I have the whole gamut from commercial to hand dyed, a lot of some dyers, less of others. Um, but everybody has dye styles and also like yarn colors they like. One of my favorite things about Allie is that she dyes, I think the, in, well, she just did the monochrome collection. So you know this, the entire rainbow very well. There are some dyers that really specialize in pastels. There are some that have like certain variegated styles, which are interesting, but not my preferred. I prefer short runs of color and some speckles maybe, but um, I think that lends to be a more consistent knitting experience, no matter your pattern. You should still helical knit or whatever, swat, switch skeins when you're in the round because that's the only way to really like prevent any kind of color situations. Um, I have not done that with all of my yarn from Explorer Knits and I have had great success. I think the other dyer for me that um, has a similar style and like it maybe not consistency, I'm not exactly sure because I've only gotten hers from D sashes and I have several skeins, both in DK and fingering, is Dragon Horde yarn. Um, and that's what my Brooklyn light is made out of and I really love that dye style I think it's a more complicated variegated style because like the, the way that the layers happen happen I have never dyed yarn in my life so I cannot tell you if that's true or not but it seems as though less dyers do that style and that is my preferred style of variegated um I am gonna try some new dyers this year I am open to the world of colors I love, sometimes fandoms I love, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but I think like, you know, sometimes you just really love all the things someone does. And I think that's cool. Um, speaking of dyers, Treehouse has their drop tomorrow or today, if you're watching and I drop this on Sunday or Saturday night, I'm not really sure when I will drop it, but Treehouse is, um, releasing collection on the 10th, which is Sunday. Um, and that is the ever after collection. 
and I don't know if I talked about this last week, but like Ever After is my mom's most favorite movie ever. She loves Cinderella. That's like her favorite fairy tale. And this came out in like the mid nineties or whatever, right? It's Drew Barrymore. And I don't know who, what the guy's name is, but Angelica Houston's in it. And it's a retelling of Cinderella. It is so good. It's a great movie. You should, I think it still stands up. I watched it like last year, I think. Uh, it's, it gives me like it's so much nostalgia. Those are also the yarns I tend to purchase more or like things that either I like that I connect with the collection. So like right now, Kate, let's just throw other things out here. Kate from Red Door Fiber Studios is doing a Dungeons and Dragons collection. These colors are really fun. There's a lot of a lot of colors happening, but like I don't have any personal like fandom connection to it. So like I, I don't unless there was like a color that I felt was like missing from my yarn or had a particular project in mind and I saw it, I probably won't buy yarn from that collection. That's kind of how I feel. Um, that doesn't always stand for sure, but like I'm more likely to buy if I feel connected to the fandom or the thing that is being like, so like for example, um, there was just the Bridgerton collection and, um, from, I cannot remember who just released that. Uh, but I, and I love Bridgerton, but like, I'm not a pastel girly. So like just none of those colors were really like calling to me. So I skipped it and I think that is fine. Um, all this to say, I don't know if I'll buy any yarn for Treehouse. I do really like the, the colors and she picked like, if you look at the pictures, like her, each photo of the yarn pretty but if you swipe through them on Instagram and you see like the quote that is the color name and the color inspiration inspiration like the picture she took which is generally from the scene or the person talking at some point in the movie are spot on I may not buy any but my favorite color in the collection purely because of the name is I'm just here for the food which is this dark green I will put this color here it is like um foresty hunter green it's a little bit more warm of a green than I would pick so I probably won't buy it but it is the best color because that is the best line in the whole movie yeah so good okay um but I may buy like a couple of skeins or for like one project for my mom you know for a future knit for her I already have one coming up from the Outlander yarn which again is more her fandom than mine though I did read all the Outlander books and watch the show and stuff um I mean, and I love Sam Hewen, so semi-fandom. Okay, um, what do I have to say? I think that's kind of all. I had a really great time. Any time with the knit group is great. Super fun. Got to meet some extra knitting friends in real life, which was fun. Um, I liked the Rose City yarn crawl more than the Puget Sound yarn crawl, which I've only ever gone to like one or two stores during. I think the Puget Sound yarn crawl does not often do pop-ups or not as not every store does. And like that was the fun part because quite frankly, a lot of local yarn stores, other than a place like Ritual Dyes, which has tons of their own, like mostly their own yarn, tend to have a lot of overlap. So going to a great number of stores that really only have overlapping yarn it's like not that exciting it's great to frequent the one that is your local yarn store for sure um and sometimes there's like little special things but like the Puget Sound yarn yarn tour just like for me has never really done it um also it's too many there are too many stores they're too spread out there's fairies involved and so like to actually finish your passport feels very stressful um Whereas this was, I think, only eight. And, like, lots of people did. We did five accidentally. We didn't mean to go to that many yarn stores. Um, we were not intending to finish it. So nobody, none of us, like, got stamps or a passport or anything. Um, but I think the Rose City one is great. I think, like, it's having every store having a pop-up or more and different things than just yarn, too. Like, with the bags and designers and um, and yarn plus, like, like at Ritual Dyes, they had like stitch markers and earrings that were like crochet inspired because I think they were like granny squares. Anyway, um, that's super fun. 
so a super fun time. I think like if you're in the Pacific Northwest or, you know, would ever want to join a yarn crawl that is outside of your city, that's a great one to go to. I also, I love Portland. I think they have great food. I love no yarn or no yarn tax, no sales tax on your yarn. That's pretty good. Um, also then shopping there is great if you need to like get some jeans or sneakers. That's what I've always bought in Portland is like sneakers or jeans, like things that are like not that I go there just for that, but if I'm like with a friend or that's like, oh, like let's go on a shopping trip. Like that's what I'm going to tend to buy is like things are slightly more expensive. <laughs> I've not like bought tech or done anything like that down there, but, um, yeah, it's convenient that it's pretty close to here. Also, I really just, I love, love the food in Portland, which I know everybody says like Seattle has better food, but I think there are some things that I have had that are better in Portland. I'm not going to just like go into this whole discussion, but anyway, I think that the food is great there and like, yeah, I've always had a great time. Okay. Um, I am tired. I'm not going to go through the shawls and accessories of our free Ravelry pattern because this was a lot. I think probably next weekend also will be a lot to talk about. So it'll be a couple weeks, but we'll finish out that collection and you can again go to the bundle on Ravelry. I'll link it here. Um, here. Uh, but thank you for watching and sticking with me if you did through all my rambling. So please subscribe if you're not. Um, leave me a comment and, uh, you know, Actually, you know, he, here's a question just to end the episode. If you've made it this far and you want to answer me, do you have a local yarn crawl? What is it? When in the year is it? And do you want to tell other people about it? Do you love it? Or, yeah, you know, I mean, mostly don't like, let's not crap on anything else. I'm just saying to me, Rose City is better than Puget Sound. So that's one I would like encourage people if you can make it go to that. Um, if you have one in your city or near you or that you've traveled for and you love, let me know uh, and let each other know so you guys can all read, read the comments and let me know what you were working on. There were some really great projects people listed last week and also several that I did not know about and a couple of test notes that also were like new to me but look super cute. So um, fun. So fun. I love hanging out with you guys and telling you all of my yarn adventures uh but please reach out to me i am available on instagram and um i will always answer comments down below so i will talk to you all next week after i buy some more explorer knits yarn see you then bye mm -hmm.